Hello and welcome to a video tutorial looking at two types of knowledge, a priori and a posteriori. This is a really important distinction in philosophy, so it's definitely one that you should be aware of. So please take notes and have a go at the task at the end of the video to test how well you understand these two concepts. Right, let's dive in. Let's start with the definitions. A priori. A priori is knowledge we gain from reason. Second, a posteriori. A posteriori knowledge is knowledge we gain from experience. This is the simplest way we can draw the distinction between these two types of knowledge. So think of it a slightly different way then. A priori knowledge is knowledge we can gain from just sitting in our favourite chair and having a good, long, hard think. That's all that's needed. Whereas a posteriori knowledge is knowledge we gain from our senses. So we need to get out there, we need to observe the world. We need to experience it. It's empirical knowledge. So if we think about the two propositions in the introduction, we can now see how they are different in terms of how that knowledge is acquired. 2 plus 2 equals 4 is known from reason alone. We do not need to check anything in the outside world. Whereas four trees being in that field is something we can only know if we check with our senses. That's the difference. Let me give you some quick tips for remembering these terms. A priori is knowledge you gain prior before checking the world. You don't need to experience this knowledge to know it's true. A posteriori is knowledge you know post experience, after experience. The prefix post means after. And think of other terms you might know like post war period or post apocalyptic, post graduate. Post means after. Prior means before. Use these to help you remember the meaning of these terms. Before we have a go at some tasks, I want to give you a bit more depth on a priori knowledge in particular. Because I think of the two is the more mysterious one. So we've given an example already of mathematics, and I think that's a great example to kind of get your head around it. Something that we can know just from reason. But it's not the only example we could give of a priori, so I think we need to expand on it a bit. I'm going to give you three main categories of a priori knowledge. So our first is mathematics, okay, I'm going to give you two more. The second one is going to be statements that we know to be true or false by definition. And the third one is going to be deductive arguments. Right, let's explore the second one first. Take for example the statement, a bachelors or all bachelors are unmarried men. Okay, let's put the statement down there. Now if you look at the statement, we know that it is true or we would know it is false just by understanding the sentence itself. Because once we understand that the word bachelor means unmarried men, we know that by definition, all bachelors are unmarried men. Likewise, if the statement was, all bachelors are married men, we would know just by reading and understanding the statement, just using our reason, a priori, that that statement would be false. So this is an example of knowledge that we can have just using our reason, so it's a priori. Okay, so that's a second category. Let's look at a third category then. That's going to be deductive arguments. Now, if you're not familiar with deductive versus inductive arguments, then I please recommend you have a look at my other video on that, okay, because it's an, another important distinction you need to know for philosophy. But let me give you an example of a deductive argument, okay? So something like this. If Sarah has revised for longer than Yara and Tara has revised longer than Sarah, then Tara has also revised longer than Yara. Now, the conclusion of this argument, which is Tara has also revised longer than Yara, we know that to be true just from our reason, just by thinking about it. Because given what information we have before, we can conclude that new piece of information, because it really is found within the previous information. Now, if you're linking that to the difference between deductive and inductive arguments, the information in a deduct conclusion is actually found in the premises of that argument. Go explore that if you're not familiar with it. So a deductive argument is using a priori reasoning. So we've got our three categories therefore, mathematics, statements known by definition and deductive arguments. One last thing before we do a task, let's just put up a table now so we can compare similar ideas in a priori and a posteriori versions. Okay, now hopefully you've got a much better idea of how these terms can be applied. Have a go at these challenges 
and I will see you in the next lesson.